Okay, so here we're looking at the Scientific Notation Intuition Module on Khan Academy, and you're given a number in standard form. And then you're trying to drag your decimal point down here so that this number is the same value but written in scientific notation. And you can do that quickly, right, because you might remember the basic rules of scientific notation. So what we'll do is we'll go over those basic rules, how we know this is the answer, Right? And then we're going to ask you some questions that go beyond some of the basics here. Well, remember what scientific notation is, right? It's a number where you have the factor here, the first factor coefficient, times a power of 10 here. And the rule for this first factor right here, we'll call it factor 1, is what? Well, the factor up here, or factor 1 as we're calling it, uh, has to have an absolute value that's between 1 and 10. So that just means that if I take the absolute value of 2.845, we know this is okay because, yeah, the absolute value of this number is greater than or equal to 1. It can equal 1, but less than 10. And if that's the case, so if this could be a positive or negative value, but it's greater than or equal to 1 or less than 10, right, the absolute value, excuse me, is greater than or equal to 1 or less than 10, then it's okay. And then if you have your second factor written as a power of 10, so here we have factor 2, so where the base is 10 and the, the exponent is some power, then we're okay, right? So this could be 10 to any power, and we've really got this in written in scientific notation. So the question is that we're trying to think about um, why, why does the exponent move the way it does? So you can quickly solve these by just dragging your decimal to make the first factor between 1 and 10, with the absolute values between 1 and 10. And you can solve most of these really with little thought. But we do want you to think about it. We want you to think, why does my exponent change the way it does as I move my decimal? Right? When I move my decimal to the left, why is it that the exponent goes, to the, goes up? And when I move the decimal to the right, why is it that the exponent then goes down? What's happening here? And I guess one way of thinking about it is to look at this number. This number is 51,320,000. When you write it in scientific notation, right, that first factor it's got to become a lot smaller, right? The number uh, here, 51 million, is way larger than 10. So as you move your decimal to the left, you're dividing this factor by 10. You're making it smaller. So to keep it equivalent, you must balance out the division by 10 by multiplying by an extra 10. So these two numbers are the same thing, right? Here we have 5,132,000 times 10, which is 51,320,000. If I divide by 10 again, I have to now multiply by 10 squared, or 100, to keep these two numbers equal, and so forth. Every time I move my decimal to the left, I'm dividing the value of the number by 10. So to keep it equivalent, I have to multiply it by 10 over and over and over again. In this case, it's like saying 5.132 times 10 to the 7th. That's like saying it's about 5.132 times, what is this number? Well, this is 10 million. So it's about 5, 10 millions, right, or 51 millions that we have here. So that's, that's one way to think about it. But things get a little bit trickier here, I think, because we're dealing with smaller numbers. So as you move your decimal to the right, can you predict what will happen to your exponent, right? Well, when we move our decimal to the left, the exponent value will go up, as it does here as well, right? If we put it all over here, you can see how the decimal goes to the left, our negative, decimal, our negative exponents are becoming less negative and increasing in value just like before. And just like before, the opposite means our exponents will drop. Why is that? Well, you must think that at first we have this really incredibly small decimal, 10 hundred thousandths, two, right? This is in the 10, this is the tenths, hundredth thousandths, ten thousandths place, right? It's a tiny number. So as you move your decimal to the right, the number is getting larger and larger and larger, all the way to the point to get 2.115. So to keep these two things equivalent, you have to shrink the size of this number. Essentially, multiply it by 10 to the negative fourth, or dividing by 10 four times. That means they're equivalent. And that makes sense, because if you divided this number four times, when you divide by 10, what happens? Well, if you do that four times, your decimal moves back to the left. One, two, three, four times, and they're equal again. So that's just a way of saying, hey, as you make this number larger, don't forget to keep it equal by dividing by 10. You're dividing by 10 
the amount of times you move your decimal to the right. Right, so the further you move to the right, the more you have to divide by 10. And this is the last example. If I move my decimal once to the right, I'm making this number 10 times larger. So to balance this number, I have to divide it by 10, right, to keep them equal. I'm just writing it in a different form, that's all. So then they're equal. All right, I hope this helped.